Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video introduction, we will learn what is the fundamental law of cam follower mechanism using double dual cam follower mechanisms. <laughs> Before going to this video interaction, you must know that what are SVAJ diagrams. And after completing this video lecture, you will be able to know what are double dual cam follower mechanism and what is the fundamental law of cam design. When you have to design a CAM follower mechanism, you must define the CAM functions by plotting its displacement, velocity, acceleration, and gel diagrams. And the functions which are used for the non-dual CAM segments should be chosen based on what type of velocity acceleration and jerk is required so we have to consider some aspects which will be understood at the end of this lecture and non dual segments are those segments in which cam and follower a follower is not rising or falling it is stationary at a single point while the cam is continuously rotating When you are defining the functions in SVAG diagrams for velocity, acceleration, and jerk and displacement, remember that the points or interfaces where dual and non dual segments are connecting are very important. So, we also have to consider what type of interfaces they have. So, in CEP type of cam follow mechanisms, double dual cam mechanism is the most common. CEP stands for critical extreme position or the mechanisms in which we know what type of behavior the camp follower should show in a particular segment at its extreme positions like its start and its end. And double dual cam mechanism is the mechanism in which the follower experiences stationary position twice in complete cycle of the camp. So such applications in which they are double dual required or the follower has to stop twice are very common. For example, if I consider it here, we can consider the tube filling machines in which some injector or nozzle puts some material inside the tubes like we have the toothpaste filling machines and in that machine the tubes are moving on a conveyor and upwards on uh, towards the nozzle there is a cam follower mechanism following double dwell which moves downwards to insert the paste or fill the tube so for example if i say uh, this is a nozzle okay and it has some insertion of tube and then we say that maybe if this is the uh, entrance of the tube so if I want to tell you how the up and down moment of the follower will move this nozzle so we will say that follower is connected to uh, this nozzle somehow so it is connected here so if we consider in the start that the uh, that the tube is being filled at the start so that is dwell so this is lower dwell afterward before the next tube comes in this follower will move up that will be known as fall that will not be known as rise apparently it looks rise rise but basically when the follower is moving towards the cam it is known as fall and when it, it moves away from the uh, cam it is known as Rise. So basically, we can consider that the cam is somewhere here. 
so when this rises up it is actually going towards the camp so we will call it fall so the follower rises stays there and comes down until the next stay tube is shown here so meanwhile it also have one dwell between the rise and fall so we can call it another dwell so one dwell is while it is filling and one dwell is when it is waiting for the uh, next tube to come and me between these it also rises and falls maybe in order to avoid any interaction with the tube so this is the example of a double dwell cam follower mechanism so in double dwell extreme positions are specified so we know what type of motion the follower has to do at the extreme positions but we don't know in between so whether how the velocity or acceleration has to be so we have to choose any functions between other than dwells so that it suits our mechanism so if you have a critical extreme position problem you can consider an example of double dwell and the double dwell camp follower mechanism has divisions like the first segment is 12 so it will be at zero displacement for 90 degrees rotation of the follower then the next one will be the rise one inch 25 millimeters so further 90 degrees rotation of cam will result in rise of the follower for one inch then we have the dwell so dwell is another stationary moment for the follower for further 90 degrees rotation of the cam and the last one is the fall in which the follower will come back to its initial position by falling down or moving 25 millimeters for further 90 degrees rotation of the cam design so there are 90 degree segments four segments making 360 in total so for 360 degrees revolution of the cam there are four motions of the follower so if i quickly try to draw it if i make a displacement graph so here it will be theta moving towards this direction and displacement will be in the vertical direction if i further extend it and i remove this one and i make four segments equal segments of 90 degree telling that how from 0 degree to 90 degree the follower is moving then 180 degree the further 90 degree then further 90 degree makes 270 and the last segment as 360 degrees so the first one uh, is the lower dwell so the follower will remain here and the third segment it will be the upper dwell so the follower will remain here up till a height which we call it h so here h is equal to 25 uh, millimeters or one inch and in between it has the follower has to uh, rise for 90 degrees and at the last segment it has to fall so at the end and at the start it will be at the same position so if i just redraw this for one revolution per second of cam i simply make this uh, sketch for my a displacement segment as this so now i have to define some functions for rise and fall so they meet the other dwell segments so i have for example chosen linear functions for simplicity here so from from lower dwell to higher dwell there will be a straight line in which the follower will move up and then there will be a straight line in which the follower will move down uh, apparently this is the equation i used where y is equal to mx plus b is the equation of a line if i use theta as the uh, independent variable this equation will be replaced for s where s is the uh, movement of the follower upwards so for the dwell motions theta will be the slope m is will be zero so s will always be equal to b where b is uh, h for this one and b is zero for this segment and i will further after making the graphs for displacement i will find the graph for velocity by taking derivative of this curve uh, which 
is a line so its derivative will be obviously constant and for this constant curve when i will take the further derivative to find the acceleration there will be a zero value so if i try to make the other curve for velocity you see here the velocity for this line has become constant upwards for this one is began uh, become uh, constant in minus because it is uh, decelerating and this is a constant acceleration uh, velocity sorry uh, there is no deceleration sorry this is a constant velocity uh, in the negative value uh, so it is uh, going on opposite direction to what it was moving in beginning and this uh, segment it has drawer well so there is no velocity it is zero velocity also in the third well when we take its further second derivative for acceleration we see that these uh, infinite slope gives this infinity arrows so these arrows are telling that there are infinite values of accelerations uh, where there are discontinuities in the velocity here and uh, this uh, solution which looks very simple has some issues because if we try to complete the svaj diagram the jerk the infinity was telling at acceleration that it is going to positive or negative but here it has uh, complete uh, ambiguity that where this infinity is going so jerk will is out of question here so even we can not uh, identify what is acceleration but velocity is known here let's explain what happened in this example remember if there is no acceleration there is zero acceleration it means that there are zero dynamic forces and then there are zero dynamic forces it means that the motion is not happening so if you consider here in the example we followed uh, there was zero acceleration during the interval so it means there were no dynamic forces during the interval which means no motion that is impractical then at the boundaries of the intervals the velocity is multivalued so there are two values of velocity one is here one is zero so these two velocities at the zero duration causes some discontinuities so this means that velocity curve has infinite slope and no duration which resulted in infinite spikes of acceleration at four places and these are known as Dirac delta functions which are not possible to follow practically so based on this the jerks are again infinite so we can say that this type of mechanism is not practical it was very simple to draw but practically it will give a high value of accelerations not talking of jerk even so we will try to use a function in future which will not give this functions Dirac delta function there should be some slope here and also the function must have some derivative so there are no high accelerations so accelerations should be continuous we can have discontinuity at jerk but we cannot uh, afford infinity at any level specifically when the cam is moving at high acceleration or high rotation based on the knowledge i just gave you we can define a fundamental law of cam design uh, this design for operation of very high speeds not very low speeds we have to consider this law and this law says that the first and second derivative of displacement must be continuous the first derivative is velocity and the second derivative is acceleration so for whole interval for all the intervals there will no Dirac delta functions for velocity and displacement and acceleration so it means that the jerk function should be finite okay so there can be discontinuities in jerk function but even the jerk function should not be uh, infinite to have a smooth functioning of cam follow mechanism unless the cam is operating at very low speeds 
so that the jerks and accelerations are not affecting them okay so this is the fundamental law of cam design so the functions which were other than dwells have to be selected carefully we selected line so line is not the right way to use it we have to use some higher order or higher degree polynomials maybe or some other type of functions available with our maths which will help us achieving this based on the discussion we had and we designed a cam follower fundamental law which says that first and second derivative of displacement should be continuous so according to you what type of function should be used for displacement that keeps the acceleration continuous and the jerk function has least discontinuities so based on your knowledge what can you suggest for the displacement function i hope you understood well this video and if you have any issues comment them and if you like the video and you want to further follow the next videos don't forget to subscribe